Hey gamers, welcome back to another Epic Game Review on Epic Gamer Things. Today, we're looking at one of the most gameriest game series ever, the Style Boutique series, known to those in North America as Style Savvy. Basically, I love this game so much, I'm making an hour-long video talking about it. The games, in the simplest explanation, are fashion sims with a few extra general life sim elements, where you, the player, are usually in charge of a fashion boutique and move your way up in the fashion world. You hand people clothes, they love them or hate them, and so on and so forth. Okay, maybe it doesn't sound the most appealing right now, but I'm going to try and show you why I love these games so much. So welcome to the first part of a three part series on the Nintendo Presents New Style Boutique series which is a dumb name, so I'm just going to call it Style Boutique for this video. The reason I was inspired to make this video in the first place was, early in 2022, I spent a lot of time using my 3DS again after like years of, I don't know, leaving it to rot under my bed somewhere. Then after playing the third game in the 3DS series, it kind of changed my whole perspective on these games and then inspired me to research them. And now I'm here making an hour long video on them. This video is dedicated to the first game of the new series that released on the 3DS, also named Style Savvy Trendsetters in North America. But there will be mentions of both its DS iterations and newer 3DS iterations in this video. So without further ado... Okay, real quick before I get into it, here's a disclaimer about what you're about to see and have already heard. Basically, I have no capture card, so you're going to be stuck looking at my stupid 3DS with bad phone quality and extra pixels. And second, I'm not living with a proper mic, so you're going to not hear my teeth clacking in HD um, and I also don't want to use a AI model of like King Julian speaking for me so I I'm sorry ASMR fans you're not getting the quality today but I'm gonna try my best anyways I already gave a brief synopsis of the games as a whole but today I'm gonna be looking at new style boutique specifically in this iteration of the game the player suddenly takes over a boutique named Verano or Mira Luna in the North American version though for the rest of the video I'm sticking to the UK English localization and helps out customers. You can buy clothes from the exhibition hall, liven up your apartment, change your hair and makeup, and compete in fashion shows to expose the world to your fashion expertise. All while interacting with fun characters. Sounds like a nice casual game, right? Before I really get into the development of the series, I think there's something I should say first. Basically, the UK English name of this game can be a little bit misleading as it isn't really the first game of the series as a whole. That would be Style Boutique without the new. That game was released in 2008 by a developer named Sin Sophia, who, funnily enough, had only previously made a few wrestling games and Sim City. Pretty different from Style Boutique. So, how did this game come to fruition? Well, the Nintendo UK website actually has an Iwata Asks article in this game. Originally, I'd been scrolling through past Iwata Asks for Zelda because, well, I love Zelda. But then I saw Style Boutique and was very pleasantly surprised. I won't get too in depth on this because it's not even about the 3DS entries, so not everything said will apply to them, but there were a few key things as well as funny things that I want to talk about. If you're interested in reading the full interview, then there's a link in the description. I recommend it if you want to find out how Iwata got that dog in him. Um, anyways. So the key things. The president of Sin Sophia really wanted to make a game with clothing as a theme, which is basically how the idea of the game began. He also really loved fashion, which is why he wanted 10,000 items in the game. The total number of combinations in this game is over one septillion, by the way. One of the largest struggles in development was making the game fun to play for everyone, even those with less fashion knowledge. The approach they ended up taking was beginning with a foundation that could be enjoyed in depth, and then broadening the game into something to be enjoyed by everyone. And by everyone, I mean everyone. This game isn't geared specifically towards children or even young girls, despite the slightly confusing title of the game in Japan and Korea. While the devs seem to highlight here that girls that would play the game would enjoy the fashion element of the game more, while boys would enjoy the strategic element more, I think anyone can enjoy the game due to both of these elements, and I'm living proof of that. But there's more to say about that on New Style Boutique specifically, which I also found an interview about. This game has the same director as the last one, so it maintains the same essence of the DS entry pretty well. She's 
said that her main aim for this game was for it to be more interesting than the first iteration on the DS. I'd say she definitely succeeded, as this game also worked with a company called Drumken. Drumken? I'm gonna stick with Drumken. <laughs> Which the article describes as a company within the fashion industry that plans and produces brand and company fashion shows, parties, and other fashion events in Japan and overseas. Basically, they got a company that specialises in fashion to get advice from professional stylists. I think that's a pretty good choice to make for a fashion game. The first key thing this article talks about is making the fashion items in this game feel timeless. This was actually something I hadn't thought about before, probably because the game handled it so well. The game released in 2012, so you might expect there to be a lot of skinny jeans, weird flared work trousers and blazers, which... They do exist in the game, but there's also so much more. Plus, fashion always repeats itself because blazers are coming back. There's nothing in the fashion of this game that makes it feel dated whatsoever, partially because there are 13,000 items in it. The initial plan was to double the 10,000 from the first game, but I think an extra 3,000 is more than enough. That's practically infinite combinations. Either way, the game has a great balance of all types of styles of clothing, and while it might not exactly be the best way to live out your 20s, 30s or 40s fashion fantasies, it nails fashion from the 90s to the 2020s, which is no mean feat. You can even cosplay as a Japanese schoolgirl. That leads me on to the second key point, the impact of this game in the real world, in your daily life. I kid you not, when I go clothes shopping nowadays, I always bring my 3DS with me. Not only because I'm desperate for street passes, shout out to all these strangers, thank you for travelling with a 3DS and playing Angry Birds, but because the game is like a little block of inspiration. It's fun to try out combos and then find something similar in a store. I will rock the jeans and dress combo and there's nothing you can do to stop me. The creative director of the game, who even used to work at Drunken, spoke about this himself. He said the game was a great way for him to talk to his daughter about fashion, discussing different outfits and what looks better and what doesn't, to the point where they'd basically play the game when they went clothes shopping in real life. They seem to really push the appeal of this game not only to girls, but to fathers and daughters, which is nice to see. They also suggested using the game to train a guy to give good advice when it comes to fashion to his girlfriend, which was funny, though of course men can be fashion legends too. The producer of the game, Yamagami, also talks about the game's influence on him, which made him feel more confident talking to salespeople in fashion shops. Though my favourite thing he said was about playing the game as a fighting game or something, where customers are like enemies, arranging an outfit is like thinking of attacks, and if the customer likes the outfit, they've been defeated. That's when I realised, that's basically how I play the game. I get very competitive and passionate when making the perfect outfit for a person, and trying to rip them off as much as possible. Especially customers with chic tastes, which is the most expensive in the game, and trying to get as many shop funds as possible in one day, which feels like XP. I always wondered about my own tastes in games such as why I enjoy games where I can decimate my enemies and burn forest creatures on a cross like in Zelda, over games like Animal Crossing, where I only really enjoy the game by tackling my debt like Tom Nook is my enemy. Star Boutique definitely didn't seem like Zelda at first thought, but with the producer's perspective, as well as how I play the game, maybe they're not so different after all. The interview doesn't go super in depth into the specifics of the game, which makes sense because these interviews are usually meant to come out before a game is actually released. Which is actually not the case for this one, but I recommend that you read the whole interview using the link in the description. I promise it's worth it, like, why are they so funny? <laughs> so now we know a little bit of background info about the game, let's actually get into the game itself. You start off in front of a fashion boutique called Verano and catch sight of a really cool mannequin. Evie, the boutique manager, sees you and is like, Hey girl, that's my handiwork. You new to fashion? Also, could you please open the door for me? I'm holding a ton of boxes, lol. You follow her in, she properly introduces herself and the boutique, and then asks for your name and birthday. You have a small conversation about running a boutique, and she talks about how she needed a lot of support from friends and customers to get to the point she's at now, which will basically become the story of the game for you. Very nice of her to tell you what to expect. A customer interrupts your conversation, who needs clothes for a date. Evie gives her a banging outfit, which is actually the same outfit you saw in the mannequin, and the customer is impressed. 
Evie then asks for your opinion on the outfit, to which you can reply that the outfit is elegant or that the feminine style really suits her. And now Evie is impressed by your fashion knowledge. As a result of making the customer happy, you receive happiness. It's a gameplay mechanic we'll get to later, but here the game explains that when you make people happy or do something satisfying for yourself, you will earn happiness. And apparently, good things will happen to you if you collect enough. The customer leaves, and Evie's about to ask you something when Maisie, another customer, walks in. She needs a simple pair of jeans, and Evie asks if you'd like to serve her, and then BAM, you're just thrown into the game. Of course, the tutorial's there to guide you and to help you familiarise yourself with how to navigate the storeroom. In quotes, because it's a game screen, obviously. You give Maisie some cool jeans out of like four options, and they're all acceptable make a sale, and Evie tells you how she's been needing an assistant with how busy it's been lately, and you're invited to start the next day. She also introduces the mobile phone to you in a bit of a strange way. She's like, oh my god, we have the same phone, allow me to tell you how your phone works, because people definitely buy phones they don't understand how to use. Though I guess that might be a bit harsh, because this is 2012, and I don't know, maybe people haven't come to grips with phones yet? You leave the boutique, but then get to see a little bit of what happens afterwards. Evie's excited to have you on board, and Harriet, a freelance stylist who works at the boutique from time to time, enters and asks all about you. As Evie explains your appearance, you can pick out what you look like, and then check over your appearance once she's done. I think that's a pretty creative way to customise yourself. You go home, familiarise yourself with your apartment, and spend a couple days in the fashion assistant routine, which involves buying clothes, meeting Chad the delivery boy, learning how to filter clothing to find an outfit easier, all with Harriet and Evie by your side. You also meet Lola, who's like a famous ex-model, I think, who sneakily mentions a fashion contest which is about to be run in the area. Basically, you'll get there later. But after getting familiar with the basic gameplay loop, Harriet leaves the boutique, wanting to focus more on becoming a stylist on her own, and Evie wishes her good luck for the future. A few more days pass, and one day, Maisie asks if she can become an assistant at the boutique, and Evie's like, oh yeah, sure, I guess, lol. And then, Evie asks you to make an outfit for her. Once she's happy with your selection, she talks about how strange it feels to be a customer for once. Hmm, foreshadowing? <laughs> and then she just gives the boutique to you. Yeah, even she admits it might be a bit of a shock, but she's confident in your ability, and she wants to transform the town. You can now name the shop whatever you want, within the character count, and then the shop closes while you redesign it. You can choose whatever design you want, and depending on what style you choose, it will actually influence the type of customers who will walk into your shop. Then the shop is reopened. After some more gameplay, the contest hall is open. But not for you yet, because you're still a tiny petite novice. And then Harriet wins the international contest. Woohoo! Go girl! then blah blah blah, more gameplay, and you can enter the contest hall too. You can then slay the competition, including Harriet, and that's basically where the story ends. Definitely not where the fun ends though, because you can still enter whatever contest you want for prize money, or just for fun, as the nature of the game makes it endlessly playable even without story progression. So story-wise, there isn't a whole lot, especially in comparison to the third game, because oh boy, that one's something for another video but it's not bad by any means. Also keep in mind that I played the main meat of the game through nearly a decade ago, so I mainly spouted this using Wikipedia and some YouTube playthroughs, which I'll also link in the description. I don't think a game like this needs a whole lot of story to make it engaging anyways, as the best stories are told by the customers. Usually, I believe that the purpose of a story in a video game is to propel the player to play the game more and feel truly immersed and motivated to reach completion. You can have the best story ever told in a video game and have it still be boring because of lacklustre gameplay, which just sours the whole experience. You can also have the best, most creative gameplay mechanics ever, but without a good story, a lot of players aren't going to enjoy the game. Every game needs a hook of some sort, whether that's story or something else, and I think this game does enough to interest the player to continue playing even without something with sprawling lore like, I don't know. Kingdom Hearts? Is, is that a good example? <laughs> it's not a fantasy game, so it more so relies on and excels at using little quirks and interactions with customers and other characters to keep you playing. 
Also, a lot of people, like me, just like playing these games to make cool clothing combos and show how much better we are than Harriet. I'm on to you, girl. I know your name is Emmy Lou in the American version, and that double barrel is just a bit of a deal breaker for me, girl. Ultimately, though, if this game did have a little bit more going on with it, I'm sure it would solidify itself as the best iteration of the series. Sometimes when I choose between the three 3DS iterations, I tend not to choose this game because the other games just have a little bit more going on. But I mean, every game series should look to improve on its past iterations, so... Success? So first up, under gameplay we have the art style, which I mean, you could argue it isn't really gameplay, it's just like general art direction, eh, but I think it I think it affects the way you play the game, at least in my experience, I don't know, anyways. Okay, so one thing about this game series is that the art style changes with every new installation. So what about this game? I think it's actually my favourite out of all of them. It perfectly mixes the style from the DS iteration which, while pixelated, is kind of cute in its simplicity and the smoother style of the new iterations, without being too over the top. The characters don't have wacky eye sparkles, which, to clarify, are cool, they're just... I'm not feeling them. I just think the character models in this game look really satisfying. The colours don't clash, and it just feels smooth and classy, I guess. The later games lean a little bit too much into a sparkly, cluttered anime aesthetic for my own taste, but again, they're still not bad, just not my favourite. The character animations are cute and kind of funny. They look like they've been done with some weird motion capture, but the models themselves don't seem to have the best rigging, and they're also unrealistically skinny, so it has some sort of scuffed stickman animation energy. And I don't mean the good ones. Speaking of, the bodies in this game are unrealistic, which unfortunately isn't surprising for a fashion game, and is definitely something I'd like to see improved in the future, in both games and in real life. And it's not just because it's important to have a realistic representation of a body for people who play the game, but even from a game perspective, it's nice to see variety and make each character feel distinct, you know? The skinny body types never really bothered me personally, because it's not like the game is super realistic in that regard anyways. I have massive anime eyes and barely have a nose. And I'm usually more focused on clothing than the body wearing them half the time. Though that said, one thing that did bother me a bit was the lack of variety in the skin tones. I'm glad that there is a larger variety than like three types of light beige, as some games do, and that there is a variety of skin tones within the people that you meet in the game, but there still isn't really a suitable skin tone for someone like me, whose skin isn't super light or super dark, and also doesn't have red undertones. This is always a problem for me in games though. My me is always lighter than me because the jump between mid-tone skin colours and dark skin colours is too large. Media in general still seems to leave out South Asia in many ways, and in the rare cases that it doesn't, it doesn't really relate to me because people think there's only one story to be told for brown people. But I mean, that's a separate rant. <laughs> Moving on to the clothes, they look good, not being too smooth and maintaining some appearance of texture, even if they're a little flat and pixelated. But I mean, we are talking about the 3DS. Sometimes your character is so skinny that the clothes kind of awkwardly sit or float on you, but that's really only if you look closely. There's also a really nice selection of clothes to choose from, and I'd be here all day if I mentioned all of them, but here's just a few. T-shirts, shirts, camis, tank tops, polos, blazers, tube tops, bikinis, cardigans, boleros, vests, bloomers, fashion jackets, jumpsuits, party dresses, sandals, trainers, boots, chokers, and I'm gonna stop there. The point is, there's a lot. I don't think you'd struggle much to find something you like, or even something similar to what you own in the real world. Environments, which you can see most clearly when you visit places like the meadows, the park, and backgrounds in the photo booth, are... okay. The meadows and park look nice when you're in them, though I should note that any environment you see in game only has like one or two perspectives to view it with, but in the photo booth, some of the outdoors backgrounds, specifically the trees, look a little bit rough. It's most notable when you flick through the seasons. So overall, I would say that the game looks perfectly fine and gets the job done. Alright gamers, here we go, here's the true meat of the game. Serving customers. But how about instead of just telling you, I show you instead. Hey gamers, welcome back to another Star Boutique thing, um, here's my customer for today, um, zoom in, and um, 
I'm going to serve her and then I'm, she's going to say hello and I'm going to say what's up and she's going to say she really likes my outfit because it's really girly I'm going to say okay that's cool If you've got the clothing necessary to satisfy the customer you press no problem If you don't you'll have to decline If you're unsure about your stock and want to check you can still press no problem and then have a look at your stock If you find out you can't help a customer you can still decline by using the menu button They won't be mad I most commonly have to press this option if a customer wants a hat because no one sells enough of them and they're ugly and I don't want them in my stock. Anyways, I know that I can help this customer with my fashion expertise, so allow me to whip up an outfit. We have all kinds of sections of clothes, such as inners, tops, outers, trousers, skirts, dresses slash all in ones, gloves, bags, headwear, eyewear, scarves, jewelry slash neckwear, socks and tights, because I'm not saying that word, leg warmers and shoes. The selection of clothes is broad and helped me learn a lot more about clothes and other cultures as well. This is actually where I learned what a cheapow is. The customer asked for something and there's a little reminder of what they said up here so you don't forget. The game offers a great way to make choosing a satisfactory outfit. Filters. This is seen by opening the menu and hitting search. Now you can search by type of clothing, brand, colours, patterns, price range and the one I use almost exclusively, image. This is basically the kind of outfit you want, the energy you want to exude, and there's a wide range without feeling too overwhelming. We have basic, girly, preppy, lively, sporty, psychedelic, feminine, chic, ethnic, eastern, baby doll, gothic, glam, bold, and rock. I would say that the most useful of these are girly, basic, feminine, chic, lively, and bold. The least necessary ones are probably glam, sporty, and psychedelic. They rarely show up and can overlap with other images anyways. Though maybe if you change the presentation of your shop, they might show up more often. Even so, the game makes it clear in fashion contests that they aren't really as popular as the rest. Also the term ethnic? Um... <laughs> Depending on what season you're in, which unlike the DS version, doesn't rely on real-time calendar dates and instead follows its own calendar, customers will either require an outer or jacket or despise you for giving them one because they're going to melt! I think that following an in-game calendar has its pros and cons. The good thing is that if, like me, you play the game in short obsessive bursts and then leave it for months before returning to it, following a real-time calendar means your stock will be full of winter clothing when it's summer, and it will be harder to sell. However, there is an element of extra immersion when following a real-time calendar and clock, which is something they'd bring back in the next instalment, but again, that's another video. Anyways, at this point I have an outfit ready, so let's just go and show it to the customer. Oh yeah baby, they love it and I rip them off, let's go. The gameplay is surprisingly deep with a very effective risk and reward system, my favourite! Here's an example. A girl enters your boutique and asks for clothing that suits her. She uses no keywords so you can't just look out for synonyms for a style she describes and then filter through clothes like usual. You have to actually look at the person you're serving and the clothes they're wearing and then take from that what you can. And it's actually harder than it looks. I can't tell you the amount of times I've thought someone wanted chic clothes but they actually wanted something bold. There is some unexpected overlap between styles that really shows you just how subjective fashion can be. Another element that plays into this is the customer's budget. A higher budget will usually indicate a style with more expensive clothing, such as chic or preppy clothing. On the other hand, a small budget will usually be something like basic or girly styles. This is a tough way to decide, but there's also another option. Once you select clothes, you have the option to say, try it on or take a look. The former shows the customer that you are confident in your decision, and they will head straight to the changing room with full faith in what you've picked. If they like it, they'll really like it and you'll get a lot of happiness. They might even ask for a full outfit if they haven't already. If they don't like it, they'll be a little bit disappointed and then leave. No second chances and no happiness. On the other hand, with the take a look option, you ask the customer whether or not they like what you've chosen or not. And then they can either tell you they want to try it on themselves, or just say... <laughs> if they don't like it, then you have two more chances to show them something impressive or they'll leave, which takes away some of the pressure of getting things right on the first try. However, if they decide to head straight to the changing room, and they end up liking what you've picked out, you'll receive less happiness as a result, and they probably won't ask for more clothes, which means you miss out on potential sales. The risk is having one shot to impress the customer, but the reward is worth it if it means you make a better sale and get more happiness. 
It adds a level of strategy to the game that I really enjoy. And as a fashion pro, I regard the take a look option as a last resort, but sometimes if I really want to make a sale and I'm completely unsure of what a customer wants, it's worth it to make a sale rather than to sell nothing at all. You know what, at this point I should probably mention another great thing about this game. You get to sell men's clothing as well as women's. They have their own images, though they're mainly the same as the women's but with less selection and a casual option, but I like that this game included men coming into your boutique too. I don't discriminate when ripping people off. This one's a strange one. Basically, the aim of every day is to gain a full meter, jar, stair jar, whatever it is that looks cool, of happiness. You mainly do this by serving customers and making them happy, as well as going out on your own and with NPCs, and also putting on new clothes for the day, new makeup, new hair, etc. When the day-night cycle ends, all your happiness is sent off into the moon, which sprinkles happiness all over the city. Sometimes this can give you a cool new clothing item, though is it really worth it? Nah, not really. Do I even understand why it exists in the first place? No. <laughs> Will I still grind the game until I get a full jar? Yes. There's literally no incentive to, and it doesn't even give you amazing clothes half the time, but I don't care. I will fill the magical stair jar. My own feelings aside, I do think that the game would do just as well without this mechanic, but I don't know. Maybe adding a visual element helps with feeling gratification from lesser prevalent elements of the game, such as buying furniture. The music in this game is awesome, but there's one track in particular that stands out, and even better, it's the one I'm sure you'd hear the most while playing. It's the Serving a Customer tune. This track does one of my favourite things in gaming OSTs in general. It adapts and changes depending on what item of clothing you've selected. I've tried to find the name for this, something like dynamic or adaptive music, but if someone knows the actual name then please tell me in the comments. I'd say the most easily recognisable examples of this would probably be the music in Mario Kart Wii and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe when choosing a Grand Prix. I discovered this when playing the game with headphones and realised that the music had changed when I added shoes to an outfit. I knew that the game's music changed between no clothing selected to clothing selected and between the menu search option, but then I heard some extra bass kick in and thought, wait, surely they didn't create unique layers for each section of clothing, right? They actually did. Now I'm not the most reliable when it comes to music theory, like if you show me anything other than bass clef as a cello player then good luck. But here's my breakdown of each section of music, which in total makes over 15 different layers to one song.
bass music is already one of the best things my ears have ever heard. Like, not in a Tis the Kingdom final trailer way, but in a this is really damn groovy way. Honestly, sometimes I just take my time when choosing clothes to hear it longer. I think this music really helps with, and I'll say it again, immersion. It makes you feel like you're building an outfit from the ground up, something that feels more and more complete as you go along. Every item of clothing is integral to the outfit to make it that specific outfit, like having different parts from different instruments make a different song each time. I think it's really creative. I'll go a little less in depth with the rest of the music within the game. It utilises a bunch of bass, synth, strings, saxophone, drum kits, and my personal favourite, the cowbell, which can be heard very faintly in fashion contests. This game has its own complete musical identity, with the saxophone, synths and bass being most central. It doesn't try to sound too much like stereotypical girl pop, which I feel a lot of fashion games tend to do, or at least the ones I used to play on Girls Go Games, but those are a genre of completely unhinged games, so... I just think it sounds kind of mature and clean. I think this is the best game out of the series when it comes to music for this reason. The latter games do tend to be a bit more peppy with higher synths that give me a headache. Looking at you, Style Boutique 3. Side note, but another thing I like is how the music changes and sounds when you're in another room, or when you prepare a model for a fashion contest. Again, immersive. I also really like the music that plays when a customer tries on clothes. I think it does a strangely great job at making something so seemingly easy, like telling a customer to try on clothes, feel so tense as you await their reaction. Then, if a customer likes what you've chosen, you feel a wave of triumph as the brass kicks in. The sound design in this game is also fun, with a bunch of nice clicky and cool sounding select sounds that aren't super distracting. But I don't have much else to say about them though, because I'm not really an expert when it comes to that. Moving on to the mobile. You can also access your mobile phone from your apartment and map screen, which features an album where you can save up to 100 in-game photos, a Fashion 101 page where Evie kind of just stands around and looks at you while you scroll through an alphabetical list of key fashion words and brands, which I think is kind of neat. It's pretty educational for someone who doesn't know a lot about clothes or is just trying to get to grips with in-game brands and what clothes they mainly sell. You can also access Nuances, the in-game fashion magazine. You'll usually see a cover with your face on it, as Tess, the photographer, really loves to slam your face on magazines for some reason. There's also some trendy makeup, recommended hairstyles, and this fashion article writer named Rococo? People who played the DS game might know her, and her raves about the latest fashion biz, which is basically just you at fashion contests, and general popular outfits. None of these really have any impact on the actual gameplay, as they're mainly there just to liven up the world a little bit, which I appreciate. It allows the player to be as creative as they want. This isn't necessarily supposed to be a game with a bunch of pressure to look good, but it also gives you the option to follow in-game trends. The only way I can think to improve this is by having customers and other characters actively follow these trends, but that would be a lot of alternate outfits. You can also access your schedule, which tells you whether or not you've made plans with a customer or friend for the day or the day after, so you can keep on top of a busy schedule. The daily grind has never been fuller. Then you have the messages, which, while I never used a lot, have some hilarious things inside. Being a game from 2012, the texts surprisingly have just the right balance of trying to fit in with the trends at the time and timeless classics. Yes, MC Mode does mention the Illuminati at one point, and then we have this guy named Koji who always says, <laughs> But I think it's great. Again, it's not super functional as you can't message them back, and you also won't miss crucial information by not reading them, but it's a nice detail to have. There's also a customer list where you can see and read all about your customers. You can even organise the list from alphabetical order, most recent customers, frequency of visits, or the total amount spent in your shop. It's nice to stay on top of the people who drop by the most and read the fun profiles of each character. Such as Verity, who always boasts about how small her feet are. You also have a stylist card. Basically, you exchange stylist cards with other players via street pass, who will then appear in your boutique, where you can give them a little outfit they'll receive when they next open the game. It also allows you to exchange information, like your names, contest rank, shop name, lifelong dreams. It's basically like a fashion passport or something. 
My sister and I made quite a bit of use out of this feature, so I can tell you it's quite fun. Though it definitely has no major impact on the game from a wider perspective. Then there's the fashion quarter, which uses the internet. I never used it when I first had the game, mainly because I didn't know what it entailed, and the warning that I was about to use the internet kind of scared me a little. But it's quite fun to flick through. It consists of a whole library of other players and their clothes, and you can give each other feedback through likes. Finally, there's the wireless fashion show, which allows you to, well, have a wireless fashion show with your friends. I've never been able to try it myself, but Lola tells you that you can host your own fashion show with other people who have the game and create outfits to a chosen theme. There's a cash prize, like a regular fashion contest, and some rare items to receive, along with the clothes in your friends' outfits. I should also mention that the top screen for the mobile also shows the amount of magic happiness dust you have, along with the time of day and your personal funds. So overall, while the mobile phone isn't something I ever used beyond the odd street pass functionality and flicking through my messages because I was bored, I think it adds an extra layer of life to the game. Being able to interact with people online is a great idea, especially in 2012 when people were slightly less, well, you know. Rest in pieces, Miiverse. There's also some cool ideas here that could be expanded upon, like the messages, schedule and fashion magazine of which the messages would be slightly expanded upon in the later games. But, I mean, it's honestly not bad at all. The map for this game is quite simple. On the top screen you can see your character walking around various stock image looking backgrounds, and also see the time of day, which changes about every 7 minutes as well as how much money you have in both your personal funds and the shop's funds, all along to some funky music. Have I mentioned how much I love the music in this game enough? On the bottom screen, we have a simplified 2D representation of the map, which you can scroll through sideways. It's simple and functional, so it's not super immersive, which is a shame, because there are some small hints of world building in this game, which I feel could have shined a lot more if the map was presented a little bit differently. Luckily, this is something they improved on in the second game to an extent, and it's really only a nitpick. The map's perfectly fine as is. First, of course, we have the boutique, which is simply named My Shop on the map screen. You can change the music of your shop between three selections, which is decent enough, though none of them beat the highs of. You can also redecorate your shop with a bunch of different styles, which will then influence the kind of people that will walk in. Want people with more money? Make your boutique chic like mine. Want more rock customers? Then... It does cost money to do this every time though, instead of just buying presets and switching them out. I guess that adds some sort of realism. You can also decorate a mannequin just like the one you saw at the beginning of the game and attract some customers that way. There's also stock clearance where you can clean through your stock and sell clothes you no longer want. Keep in mind though, it will be for a much cheaper price than you would get by selling these clothes to customers. And I mean like, 10 times cheaper. The game definitely encourages you to make sales to customers, even with clothes you'd rather just get rid of. Obviously, this is where you serve customers, but this isn't just a place to make sales. Sometimes, customers will ask you out somewhere after buying clothes. And other times, customers will just waltz into your boutique just to ask you out somewhere. Another thing that I forgot to mention about the story is that Maisie won't be your only shop assistant. You have a choice between several characters, which you can then dress up with your own personal stock of items, and they can help you out while running the boutique. Supposedly these guys are supposed to have unique abilities, but I haven't really seen anything like that actually happen in the game, though they can give you some extra items from time to time. Then the exhibition hall. First, you're welcomed by Shivani, who basically runs the place, and then you can navigate through different levels of the exhibition hall to see different shops. We have a whole plethora of brands, such as Zipline, which sells brightly coloured sportswear like shirts, visors, polo shirts and shorts, Kanokoi, which sells clothes based on traditional Japanese and Chinese items, Bubble Pop, which sells lively fun clothing, Brook Bridge, which sells preppy items with a bunch of plaid, stripes and tartan, Ariana, which sells high-end bags for high-end society. AZ, I know I, sh I, I know I should say AZ, but like, I can't be asked. Like, it, it's USA's in the name, so I'm just gonna say it like an American. AZ USA, which sells bold fashion with a bunch of animal print and cowboy hats. 
Basic U, which sells, as the name suggests, basic items, for a reasonable price may I add, Chorale, which sells feminine elegant designs, Chorale Prelude, the sister brand to Chorale, which sells elegant bags, Department 9, which is basically AZ USA for men, but a little bit more edgy and cool, Enid Shen, which sells really expensive chic items, Marble Lily, which sells baby doll clothing, Marcus and Corman, which sells chic and classy clothes for men, Marzipan Sky, which sells delicate girly clothing, Miss Ribbon, which sells glam clothing with big bows and polka dots, Purple Moon, which sells extremely expensive cosplay, essentially, Raven Candle, which sells gothic clothing, it's basically Marble Lily in dark mode, Retro Beat, which sells clothing inspired by the 60s and 70s with retro patterns and colours, Soy, which sells earthy toned clothing and falls under that ethnic category, and Stage Dive, which sells edgy rock clothing with a bunch of metal and leather. It's a lot of choice, sometimes too much. It's no wonder why some brands such as Zipline and Miss Ribbon don't return in the new entries. Different stores open on different days though, with all of them being open on a Sunday, so there's another layer of strategy added to the game. You need to schedule when you want to buy from certain shops or else you'll run out of stock and then be unable to buy anything else until the shop opens again, which can sometimes mean several days of lower sales. Here you have the option to sleep until morning, access your mobile or save the game. You can then access your wardrobe to change up your style, which is incredibly fun. It's basically the same system as running the boutique, but you have unlimited options. When it comes to stock, of course. You still have to buy items from the exhibition hall or buy them at a fashion contest to own them. You can also do your own makeup, where you can select a look using individual items you've bought at the beauticians, or select an entire set of makeup from a selection of different brands to make your life a little bit easier. They certainly are the options of all time. <laughs> then, using items you can buy at the furniture store, you can redecorate your apartment by changing the walls, decor, sofa and cushions, coffee table, curtains, carpet slash flooring, lights and bed. Is there a lot of diverse choice and customization, specifically custom options that look good and cohesive? Not really, but it, it's still fun. The furniture store is really what it says it is, a furniture store. You can basically buy everything I mentioned in the apartment section, as well as these random shelves with items already on them. Is there the best choice? Well, I have to say I enjoy the variety in curtains, couches and cushions as they have a variety of styles and you can choose different colours for each, but carpets and the rest are kind of bland and the shelf units don't really have any personal unique feel to them. They're also really expensive. The guy who runs the place, Miles, is nice though. This is owned by Clarissa, who's really nice and told me to be careful walking late at night. Thanks for the advice Clarissa, I wish it didn't need to be true. Anyways, you can do quite a few things here. You can leave it to the expert, where three professional hairstylists select a random hairstyle they think would suit you, change the main colour of your hair leaving your hairstyle untouched, change only the highlights of your hair, or change your entire hairstyle with your own selection, which does include dyeing your hair. You can also change your eyebrows, which is an interesting option, though I feel like it would have been a better fit for the makeup section, but you know. There's a nice variety of hair lengths, from long to short, but there's no customization in the type of fringe you'll get with a certain hair length. For example, you might like one hairstyle for its length and texture, but it has a fringe you don't like. It certainly takes away the aspect of walking into a hairdresser and telling them exactly what you want, but then again, do hairdressers ever give you exactly what you want? At least to make up for this lack of choice, there's a nice selection of main colours and highlights to choose from. The colours span across a wide spectrum, though I like the amount of browns and blondes there are. I remember back when Kylie Jenner's hair had those classic turquoise highlights, my sister and I would always try to emulate the style with this game. Then last year I tried emulating the trendy brown hair slightly lighter brown highlights trend. This game once again proves itself to be timeless when it comes to styles between the 90s to 2020s. Or in this case I should say the 2010s to 2020s. The Beauticians also has a lot of variety, with makeup brands unique to certain images such as Rockian which mainly does darker, more gothic looks, and Enid Shen, which returns with chic, mature makeup looks. While it's not as widespread as the clothes when it comes to styles, the game still provides a good selection of makeup, ranging from gothic, lively, girly, chic, and even some more natural styles. They even sell matte and shiny lipstick, which makes me happy. I'm a matte truther, by the way. 
They also sell blush, eyeliner, eyeshadow, mascara, and even perfume. Of course, perfume does nothing really. You can't smell your 3DS. Though on the other hand, it's actually really easy to hack your 3DS. Of course there's no foundation because your skin is perfect. And also, it would be a bit pointless, like what would I change my skin colour to? No questionable decision making for me today, thanks. This place is run by Elspeth, with the experts Justin, Ethan and Isabel. You can pay a £60 experts fee to have them do your makeup for you. It's a nice option as you don't need to buy the makeup items in order to wear them. You have a choice between lively and psychedelic styles with Ethan, sweet and girly styles with Isabel and elegant and sophisticated styles with Justin. They can give you some pretty fun styles that you'd never think to try on your own, as well as the most horrific looking makeup looks I've ever seen but it's nice to experiment with your look every once in a while. Downtown sounds like it could be fun, but it's not really all that. You usually find an NPC, usually a fashion model scout or someone fashionable in general, just hanging about. It's chill, but you barely see the actual downtown. I think it would be awesome to have a scrollable downtown area of shops, like a cafe, or even better, at a shop downtown that allows you to access other people's boutiques online, instead of using the mobile phone feature. Online shopping is cool and all, but there's really nothing like walking into the real thing. Anyways, yes, downtown is boring, this is probably the most blunt I'll ever get with this game. Not much to do here, just drink a coffee which ups your happiness and chat with someone if they're there. If someone invites you here, it's really the same thing. I like the park quite a bit actually. You have Flora, a florist, who can also tell you your lucky flower and items for that day depending on what you choose when she gives you an option between three colours, and also chat to other people there. But by far my favourite interaction is with Chad the delivery boy, who is living in eternal suffering under his father's pressure to deliver things as soon as humanly possible. Not the best photo studio, but it's still fun. You show up in an outfit and get some photos taken by the one and only Tess for £20. There's plain backgrounds, backgrounds with brand names, backgrounds of places in the game. A cute variety, but none of them look all too appealing. I either keep it basic or use a background of a tree just because they look the least... dodgy. I mean, you don't even get to select a pose. You just choose the energy you want to display between the four options of sassy, casual, lively and bold, and then BAM! Random selection! Maybe I like that there's less stress of choosing a good pose, but I also like having my own creative liberty tests. I should also probably mention that there are 9 hidden locations that are only accessible if an NPC invites you over and they aren't really that special but there's not much to do there and, and, and I'm going to list them anyway. You're the hotel, picnic area, cake shop, live music area, club, whatever, live music club, uh, station, fairground, rose garden, beach and lavender fields. They look nice but it would be cool to visit these places without an NPC on your back. Um, stop making me take pictures please, thank you. Like serving customers, there's a bit of strategy involved with fashion contests too. There's four ranks of contests to compete in. Beginner, Premier, Elite and International, and you have to work your way up from the bottom. You show up, say hi to Lola and enter a contest, which will have a different theme each night. Well, a random rotation between the styles in the game. You can then choose a model from a selection of four people. They all have different appearances and descriptions, but from what I've played, it doesn't seem to really impact how you perform. It's nice to humanise the models though, they're more than just mannequins. Then you choose an outfit that fits the theme. And yes, you can't just filter by image and win straight away, though that is the case quite a lot of the time. There is some nuance in the contest themes, with keywords such as bright, colourful and elegant. So you might have an outfit that fits the eastern image as the contest theme suggests, but you could lose if it only has earthy tones and no bright colours. After selecting an outfit, you can then change your model's hair and makeup, with the same hair selections as usual, and a selection of makeup sets, which I find a little bit restrictive to be honest. Makeup doesn't seem to affect your results, so why not allow the player to use their own individual makeup items as well as the sets? Anyways, then MC Mode, the MC, shows up with his horrifically red eyes and starts the contest. As everyone else's models walk by, you have the option to buy the clothes they're wearing, which is a great way to broaden your wardrobe. Then drumroll, you win! Unless you lose. In that case, you don't win. I can't lie, sometimes I have lost to the most hideous, outrageous outfits ever, all because I've got to pay attention to the keyword of the theme. But most of the time you'll win if you utilise the filters properly and pay attention. 
if you do win, you can receive prize money, which increases in amount as you rise the ranks, as well as a bunch of happiness. You can then go to the after party, which is really underwhelming, to be honest. You can talk to Lola, who can give you some added lore and backstory for characters such as Chad and Harriet, and even herself, but there isn't really much else to do here apart from talk to rich English people. Sure, it makes more people visit my shop, but this isn't really an after party. It makes the cafe seem interesting by comparison. Can I at least get some apple juice? VIP treatment? Live bands? Karaoke? Sure, after parties are a way to unwind after the main event, but they're also called parties for a reason, you know? The happiness mechanic is really what draws everything together in this game. The sim elements might do well enough on their own simply by being charming, but having them tie into the main gameplay loop gives the player extra incentive to make the extra effort. Talking with more people also helps you gain popularity and you gain more money. I mean, customers. Is this the best implementation? No. Does it appear a little bit boring and lacklustre compared to the main objective? Yes. But is it still fun as hell? Also yes. I wish that I could talk about how this game compares to its predecessor, because I feel like there's a lot of interesting details such as the story, with characters such as Dominic and I think her name's Renee or something, which by the way, they actually show up in this game. But anyways, I'd like to talk about how these two compare and how this game's improved on the last one, but I haven't played it. So instead, I'll just give you a brief overview of how it compares with its successors. I think that, much like Zelda, can you tell I love Zelda yet, each of these games have their own distinct personalities and identities. Whether that's having a crazy uncle or secretly being a miniature or something, they all have differences. They improve on each other in some ways, and in others, I think they don't. An example of this is using a real-time clock, which the game series seems to flip-flop between. Even I'm not sure which one's better despite trying it out. I think future titles definitely improved on bringing more life and excitement into the sim aspect, tying it into gameplay in a much more integral way, without taking the main focus off fashion too much. Though it still is a delicate balance. I think the art styles of the future games don't quite meet the heights of this game, but that's just my subjective opinion. They do look more clean though. 3D, while not having much of an effect in this game at all, hence why I didn't mention it much, or at all, <laughs> is a fun thing to have, and while the next game would keep the gimmick, the third wouldn't. A slightly disappointing discovery for me. But to be honest, I didn't use it very often, so I can understand why the feature was removed. Future games would also introduce a bunch of quality of life improvements, such as allowing you to hear customers' requests in full again after accepting it. There's also many more options when it comes to hair and makeup, to the point where they became my favourite part of the second game in particular. The music in this game is the best in the series though. Again, this is subjective, but I just feel like I could listen to it endlessly, while the other games feel like eating too much sugar, to the point where you just get sick of it. This game has more variety, I think. Or maybe I just prefer the genres it leans towards. Before I finish though, I wanted to suggest a few other things I would add to these games in the future, apart from what I've already mentioned. A shopping list you can access while picking clothes and, well, anywhere, really. I can't count the number of times I've needed to restock on a particular item but get swept up in the boutique so hard that I forget entirely. Then a customer asks for said item and I have to run to get it, only to forget which item it was. Being able to make a little note of items I need to get next time I go to the exhibition hall would be useful. Letting me play as a man. I want to be a man. Okay, I don't really know if I would play as a man if they gave me the option, but... With the option in this game to sell clothes to men, it just seems like a major missed opportunity. One that they'd keep missing in the future titles. So much so that the second 3DS game wouldn't feature men's fashion at all, and the third would barely touch on it in the same way. So where's the series now? Well, as of writing, the Star Boutique series has no news of a new entry. It's far from forgotten though, as Sin Sophia announced Fashion Dreamer, yet another fashion sim and likely a spiritual successor to Star Boutique, to be released this November in Japan. The game is yet to interest me like Star Boutique though. I'm just not seeing as much charm at the moment, but I won't be able to judge until I see more of the game. Until then, I'm sticking to my 3DS trifecta, and hopefully I'll get around to talking about the other two games sometime in the future. 
This is an over 20 page document though, and easily the game with the least content out of the three I own, so I should stop before my storage dies if it hasn't already. Also, I'm incredibly sick of listening to my own voice for a week straight. This has been one of the most like tiring experiences. I. <laughs> But I really like this series, and I hope that by the end of this video, you've seen at least some of the appeal. And that's it! I hope you enjoyed this big video, and let's see if Fashion Dreamer will be able to live up to the 3DS fashion glory days. Just found out you can be a man, immediate game of the-